Okay. Um, so today in class we made a foldable of the history of atomic structure, um, but I just want to go over a little bit what you need to know about atomic structure going forward. Um, so atoms are composed of two regions, the nucleus, which is the center of the atom that contains most of the mass of the atom, because remember electrons are super tiny, and the electron cloud, which is the region that surrounds the nucleus and contains most of the space of the atom. So if the size of the nucleus, if we were to scale it up so the size of the nucleus was like a dime, the electron cloud would be the size of the town of Cary. Okay, so the electron cloud is huge, the nucleus is tiny. But most of the mass is in the nucleus. There's hardly any mass in the electron cloud. So there's your nucleus and then your electron cloud. And that's not to scale. Because like I just said, if the nucleus was a dime, the electron cloud is the size of Cary. So in the nucleus, there's two out of the three subatomic particles. There's protons, which are positively charged. They have a charge of positive one. And neutrons, which don't have any charge at all. They're neutral. Neutrons. Get it? Protons, positive, PP. Neutrons, neutral. It's pretty easy. Um, in the electron cloud, where you have the third subatomic particle, which is your electron. Okay, the electron has a charge of negative one. It has a negative charge and relatively no mass. That was kind of fast. There you go. Um, so how do they interact? Protons and neutrons live compacted in the tiny positively charged nucleus, accounting for most of the mass of the atom. The negatively charged electrons are small and have a relatively small mass, but occupy a large volume of space outside the nucleus because they're moving around so much. We mentioned in class the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. You can never be exactly sure where a specific electron is because they move so fast. So it's almost like they're everywhere, but they're not. They just You just don't know where they are. So they're basically in that whole space, but they're tiny. Why? Okay. Um, so how do they balance each other out? So in an atom, the number of protons has to equal the number of electrons. So if there's 20 protons in an atom, then 20 electrons have to be there to balance the overall charge of the atom. Atoms are neutral. They have a charge of zero. So if you have 20 positive things in the nucleus, you better have 20 negative things in the electron cloud. Neutrons have no charge. Therefore, they do not have to equal the number of protons or electrons. Okay, so the neutron number doesn't have to do with, like, isn't as strict as the proton and electron numbers, which have to match. Atomic number is the number that indicates the number of protons in an atom. So hydrogen's atomic number is one. So it has to have one proton. If it has one proton, it has to have one electron. Carbon's atomic number is six. It has six protons. How many electrons does it have? Six. It's really straightforward. Don't overthink it. The number of protons identifies the atom. So if I had two protons, it wouldn't be hydrogen anymore. It'd be helium. Okay? If I had three, it'd be lithium, etc. So the number of protons identifies the atom. It tells you what kind of element it is. Um, how do we know the number of sub oh, this is the same. So the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. So hydrogen can have a mass number of three. But we know, we just said, that hydrogen has one proton, so then it must have two neutrons to get up to three. Okay, so the number of neutrons is always equal to the mass number minus the atomic number. So you can only find the number of neutrons. It doesn't get a special named thing, but it's mass number minus atomic number. So lithium has a mass number of 7 and an atomic number of 3. How many protons would it have? How many neutrons would it have? How many electrons would it have? So it has to have 3 protons, because we just said it has an atomic number of 3. And it has to have 4 neutrons, so the mass number minus the atomic number, 7 minus 3. Okay, and for fun, it has 3 electrons as well, because it has to match the number of protons. Neon has a mass number of 20 and an atomic number of 10. So it has to have 10 protons, because the atomic number is 10, which means it also has 10 electrons. And then the mass number is, or I'm sorry, the number of neutrons is mass number minus atomic number, or 20 minus 10, which is also 10. Okay, but don't get confused. They don't have to match like that. So electrons are equal to the number of protons. So electrons, which are often written like this, E with a little minus, is electron, and P is a proton. So electrons equal protons equal atomic number. So helium has a mass number of 4 and an atomic number of 2. Since it has an atomic number of 2, it has 2 protons. And since it has a mass number of 4, 4 minus 2 is still 2. It has 2 neutrons. And electrons always equals the number of protons in an atom. So it's 2. So chlorine has a mass number of 35 and an atomic number of 17. I'm going to ask you to give you like a second here to calculate it on your paper. And then you can check and see if you're right. I'm just going to sit here awkwardly. So how many protons does it have? 
How many electrons does it have? How many neutrons does it have? Pause it if you need to, because I'm going to go on. So, protons. It has 17 protons. It has 18 neutrons and 17 electrons. If you don't understand this, put a question mark on your sheet, and we'll go over it tomorrow in class, or Thursday in class. I don't know if you're watching this on Tuesday or Wednesday. And potassium has a mass number of 39 and an atomic number of 19. Again, pause it if you need to work it out. I'm going to give you a little bit of time. So calculate the number of protons, the number of neutrons, and the number of electrons. Pause it if you're not there yet. 19 protons, because the atomic number is 19. 39 minus 19 is 20, so you have 20 neutrons. And the electrons has to equal the protons, so 19 electrons. How exactly are the particle arranged? We'll look at Bohr models when we get back on Thursday. But the Bohr model of the atom, we already learned that um, all the protons and neutrons are in the center in the nucleus. Orbitals around, oops, sorry, around the nucleus, okay? This is a little simplified from the um, cloud model, but it's what we're going to use because it'll help you be really clear on what makes compounds and what doesn't, okay? So the electrons circulate in little orbitals around the protons and the neutrons. So carbon has a mass number of 12 and an atomic number of 6. So it's got to have 6 protons and 6 neutrons and then 6 electrons. So there's your, nu or your nucleus. It has six protons and six neutrons in it. And then your, oops, wrong way. Huh? And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? You notice that there's only two electrons on this inner shell, and then the four go on the next shell. Only two electrons fit on this innermost shell. And we'll talk more about how you can remember that when we look at the periodic table. And we'll talk about how many can go on the next one and all sorts of other good stuff. But you are done. Okay, super.